the enrichment program. We want to make sure that you learn about all the ports of call that we're heading to before we get there. Now, as well, our lecturer, I'm going to introduce him in a second. I mean, this very strapping young man uh, next to me right now. Uh, but we're actually so lucky to have him on board because he doesn't just do uh, our port talks. He's actually got a, a series of lectures that he'll be doing over the cruise. Uh, so today we're going to talk about all the ports of call. And then at 3 o'clock, he's going to start the first of a three-part series all about Route 66. And I'll be right back here at the Princess Theater. Honestly, come on in. He is the rock star when it comes to enrichment lecturers. So I want you to go wild and crazy because we are so lucky to have him on board. He is the Bon Jovi of lecturers. So please welcome him to the stage just like that. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Gary Cheyenne. We'll see you around the ship. Thanks, Kevin. I pay him to say all that stuff, so. Well, good morning. Glad you came over here, and we're going to have a little port talk here first for you, so let's get started and see where we're going. In case you're on the wrong ship, we we're actually heading to Mexico, so I hope you didn't get on the wrong ship yesterday. And did you recognize that song, South of the Border? Anybody know who played that thing? It was way back in the early 60s. Did someone say Herb Alpert? Extra credit, yes. Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass, yeah. Well, we're going to talk about your ports here for about 45 minutes, and Kevin was nice enough to introduce, but my really good stuff, best thing I do is about Route 66, going out on the old highway, so, so that's going to be at 3 o'clock today in the theater, and if there's time at the end, I'll tell you a little more about that, but all of these programs will be broadcast on the TV later. I guess you don't call those TVs anymore, do you? But the, the monitor with all the cute little apps and everything, so when you turn on the TV, it'll say Princess in the upper left there, and just look around on that menu and you're gonna see right there, it's gonna say Entertainment and Events. So when you click on that, as the week progresses there, they'll have more things along there, and that's where you're gonna see the Shore Excursion Talk again if you wanna see this again, or the Route 66, whatever you got. So look for that list there and you'll find it every day on the TV after maybe a few more hours today. Well, we're doing the original route of Princess Cruises. Now, this is the old Pacific Princess. Anybody sail on the Pacific Princess in the old days? Oh, good, a few, all right, well. The guy who started up Princess, I'm told, coined the phrase Mexican Riviera. And that was to coincide with this new TV show called that. Now, who will admit to watching the love boat? Don't be afraid. Get your hands up. Yeah. You know, we watch that thing, and there's your crew. And you know, if we had more time, I'd make you give all the names of all the people there. But just one. Who's your cruise director? Julie McCoy. Julie, right? Julie McCoy, yeah. You know, that thing was on for nine years. And I think, frankly, for me, too, it was the reason why I started cruising. My first cruise was the year this thing came out. So, hey, you got to go and do that. Well, you know what? The two ships there, they used them both, Island and Pacific Princess, they look substantial, but you know what? The thing only weighed 20,000 tons. You say, well, what's that mean? Well, let me compare it for you. That was 20,000 in the late 70s. We're on this awesome ship called Majestic Princess, and it weighs in at 143,000. <laughs> we are seven times the size of the love boat. So you're going to have seven times the fun, aren't you? So get ready. See some of the stats there? And the old love boats took, I think they had 600 passengers. And if we're full, which we will be eventually when all this stuff gets over there, look at that, 3,500 passengers. So we've come a long way, and we're not even by far the biggest. Some of you maybe heard of Allure of the Sea, some of those that are over 200,000 tons. I mean, come on. But where are we going here? Well, let's remind ourselves we're going to... Cabo San Lucas, and then over to Mazatlan, and then down to Puerto Vallarta, the classic seven-day cruise. All right, first time to these ports, hands up. Ooh, a few, okay. Been there before, hands up. Can't remember whether you've been there or not. Hands up. There's a few always, right? I don't know. I talked to some people last week, and they said, we don't care where the ship goes, we just wanted to cruise again. They go out and sail around the circle for a week, and we can come back. So, yeah, right. so, anyway, we're going to have some fun out there, though. So we're going to Cabo San Lucas, and we're going to be there tomorrow from about 11 in the morning till about 7.30, thereabouts. 
And remember that tonight, it says in the very bottom of your pattern of the day, maybe you didn't see it, it's on the back. We're gonna lose an hour, because they're on mountain time and, and California, of course, on Pacific time. So if you're awake at about 2 a.m., you're gonna hear this loud racket and noise. They're gonna fix all the clocks and set them an hour later. So I'm sure your cabin guy will remind you of a little card or something, but, but we're gonna lose an hour tonight. We'll get it on the way back, so. So now this is the very end of California. I mean, this is the end, and it's all white on top. And that's not icing, is it? And you know what caused that, don't you? Yeah, so be watching for that. We'll be sailing right by there on the way about 10.30 tomorrow morning, so you can see the very end. And I'm not the Espanol total classic guy, but Baja means lower, doesn't it? So we're gonna be in lower California. And the first thing you're gonna notice as we're sailing in there is the arch, El Arco. And it's pretty impressive. Now you're not gonna go sailing through there, or the ship, sorry, it won't fit. Maybe the old love boat would have fit through there, who knows? But there's a whole bunch of ways to get out there. And you're gonna see him and maybe you'll go out there in any one of all kinds of different ways to go. Maybe you wanna do it that way or that way. These are water taxis and more about those in a minute. But we're gonna go right by as we're coming in the Playa del Amor, that's the lover's beach. So you go over there and remember, you can't get over there in a car it's too far to swim, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take these water taxis. Now we have the shore excursions that take you over there as well as part of your day, but if you, on your own, then you take the water taxis from the same area where we're gonna be pulling in there with the tenders. So notice you got three choices there, Lover's Beach, Divorce Beach, or the Arch. Well, what's with that? Well, there's a Lover's Beach, and you see the people out there all day mingling around there and doing stuff. Well, Divorce Beach, I'm not making this up. I mean, that's the name. So the red dot is Lover's Beach. You just amble on the way there towards the Pacific side and go to your left there and you can do lover stuff and divorce stuff same day, same afternoon. So this is gonna be great. You can do both of those at one time. There's also the catamaran kind of rides that we offer, and maybe you want to go on your own if they're sold out. A few of the tours are sold out, but there's always a way to do stuff there. So you see, they're gonna go around out into the Pacific, past the arch. See, that's Divorce Beach there in the background there. So you can do that if you want. There you can see the ship, that'll be us, kind of behind the arch there. When you get a, one thing you will notice is, if you haven't been to Cabo for a while, it has really grown. You're gonna be amazed at what's happened there in the last couple, 20 years or so. But see, look at all this development now. Maybe it wasn't there on your first visit or last visit. You didn't notice this. There's also the glass bottom boat way to do it. And there's even a sunset sailboat cruise. Now I looked up the sunset, it'll be tomorrow at 6.52. We're supposed to be back on board by 7.30. So I'm sure they'll hold the, the ship until whoever's on this thing gets back to the tender place there. We won't leave without you. And if we do, we'll be back here exactly two weeks from tomorrow. <laughs> so if you want to come back, hey, stay there and a couple of weeks, we'll pick you up next time. And maybe you'll see my yacht. I have this yacht down there. And if you're real nice, I'll let you come on board and kind of angle around there so yeah you're going to see every size and shape of vessel that's for sure now most of you know this is a place where the whales like to come the humpbacks and the gray whales well they're still working their way south from alaska i don't think they're going to be out there yet it's a little early this is mid-october still but as the season progresses and boy they hang out there by cobble all winter long and it's great fun to go out there well come back later on and you'll see them out there maybe but again, as we come into the harbor area there, keep looking at all this development that's going up along the slopes there as you come in. So we're gonna pull in here, we're gonna anchor in the bay there, and we gotta take the tenders ashore. Now some of you are gonna ride first class, you're gonna be up there on the top. The rest of you are gonna be down there in steerage down below. But don't worry, we're not going very far. So you'll be pretty close there, depending on the number of ships, it shouldn't be more than a 10 minute ride. I mean, we'll see when we get there. It depends on how many ships are lined up there. And to accommodate all the people, the local 
pier guys, they have the little boats as well. So even though there's a lot of people involved, you wouldn't have to wait very long most of the time to, to go ashore to get back. So it's going to be easy. So boy, this is old Dawn Princess, but you get the concept here. Going to go down to deck four. Maybe you haven't been down there yet. That's where the medical stuff is and everything. You don't want to go there if you don't have to. But down there also is where you have access to the tenders. So what were they going to do? I double checked again this morning, and most of you have done this before, but they're going to use a, a ticket system for the early departure folks, especially those guys on the tour. So if you have an organized tour, they want to make sure you all get together and go. So you're going to go to one of the dining rooms. They tell me they'll, there'll be something in your cabin tonight to tell you all the details. If you have a ticket for a shore excursion, then maybe it'll say on there. But just whatever it says to do, just go to the dining rooms. They're going to give you a ticket. For the, you're just going ashore on your own. Well, you just go down there and wait your turn. Eventually, they'll get it all cleared out. And if you want to go down there at 1.30, and just go down to deck four and go. But in the beginning, to kind of keep things calm, they have you go to the dining room first and you get a number. Just make sure you have, have all the stuff you want to take with you when you go down to the dining room because then you can go right into the tender from there. So you don't want to go back to your cabin after that. So you can see at least two ships here. Maybe we'll see some other guys there. Who knows? We'll find out. But they're going to bring you in here in one of the tenders and dump you off right here, right by the middle of the town. This is going to be good. You will find this very easy. But look at this place now. Cabo San Lucas in modern times. This place now has over 200,000 people living here. I mean, 30 years ago, well, my first time here, I think, was 1979, and there just weren't a whole lot of people here then. But look at that, over 200,000. Well, there's your map, and we're going to be pulling in right there. You say, well, I want to take a taxi. Well, I want you to know, maybe you didn't know this. There's still a few of these special taxis around, and I'm hoping you can find one of these, because Part of the experience of going to Cabo is taking one of these very interesting taxis. So you're ready? Try to find one of these taxis. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know which seat is shotgun, but you know, maybe the rider goes front. You get look for these. These are going to be fun. You're going to love it. How much but, first class? Yeah, first class is up front, I suppose. Yeah, and steerage is in the back, right? Yeah, so look out for that. Well. They're going to have regular taxis too, and you know the routine. You guys are veteran travelers, but you can kind of share the ride. Maybe you can go somewhere, get some other people to go, and maybe you negotiate for longer distances. So just find out. Just wanted to know some of the cabs are vans. If you're looking for a taxi, just go ashore, and there are going to be plenty of people who will want your business. They're going to be asking, hey, you want to go somewhere? So you won't have any trouble finding transportation. But for a lot of you, you're just going to go into town and meander around. It's, it's very nice, very modern down there. You can see the nice walkways there and look at some of the local stuff there. Oh, remember pay phones? Remember those? I wonder if they still have that there. But this is the beach that's closest to the city there. If you don't want to have to take a water taxi over to Lover's Beach and all that. The only thing is, is see, we're back here at the red dot. You can't just walk over here. You have to go way to the right in this picture, back around. You'll probably have to take a taxi if you want to go over there on your own. But a lot of people like to go over to Madonna Beach. And there's, who knows, with this virus stuff, I don't know whether there'll be nobody on the beach or thousands. We're just going to find out, aren't we? Because I haven't been down there the first time since all this started last year. But, but that's where it is if you want to go over there. And, now, see, this is my idea of going to the beach. <laughs> And if you go down a little place farther, out of town there, the Cabo Villas, Villas, how about that? Sun protection maybe and a beverage or two. Now this, look how they've manicured the sand for you. Can you believe that? Probably lasts for about four minutes, right? And then that's gone. But, but this is a neat place if you want to go over there and use their facilities. I'm sure there's a fee for that, but hey, why not? And I'm sure you're going to see the, the parasail people around there, around a lot. They've been on there for years. and. Maybe you didn't know, but if you pay these guys a little extra, they'll drop you right back on the ship up there on deck 16 and 17. You won't have to worry about taking the shuttle back to the ship, so consider that, will you? And some of you are going to go play with the dolphins. In fact, I think all three of our ports have a 
a tour where you can go play with the dolphins, so we'll see him again later. Or maybe you want to ride a horse on the beach, and they'll be available for you if you like. There's one right there. And they have the mandatory pirate ship. Somebody's going to do that. So if you have enough rum punches, you may end up doing this. So I don't know about this, but you're going to walk the plank and go snorkeling. So how about that? And if you're serious snorkels, there's two places you can go, and the ship tours are probably the best way to do it, but these are ways out of town, a few miles, but you go over to Santa Maria is one there, and you see how the, the catamarans come in there and you snorkel in the bay right there, or you go to Chileno Bay, and they have the snorkeling there. They're only a couple miles apart as you go farther east out of town, but if you want to do some snorkeling, well, we got some fish for you, so there they are. And if you're more serious, you might want to do some diving. And they have several dive areas there. If you're a dive expert, you probably already know what you want to do. But if not, we have two tours available if you want to sign on for those. And maybe you see one of these guys. So this could be your lucky day, for sure. And a lot of people like doing this. He seems pretty happy, right? So you can do the zip line. I never thought they had zip lines around Cabo, but they drive you back up into the mountains for an hour or so, and then they let you do the zip line thing. She seems pretty happy, so. That's available if you'd like to do that. I guess the newest trend is the, are these electric bikes. You can pedal if you want, or if you get lazy, you can just push the thing and you go, and we can ride those along the beach if you like. And how about this? I know most of you have always had this hidden dream. You always wanted to ride a camel. And you can do this in Cabo. How about that? They take you up to this ranch a few miles north of town there, and then get the camels out, and off you go. So how about that? If you've been here before, maybe you haven't been over to the neighboring town there, San Jose del Cabo. And that's where the airport is and some other things are over there. So you might, if you've already done the Cabo stuff enough, maybe go over there and meander around. It's about 20 miles away and it's about a half hour. So you're gonna charter the vans or somebody and they'll, I'm sure they'll have a fixed rate for going over there. But if you wanna go over there, why not? Try something different down there. See what that's like. And some of you are going to go up to Todos Santos. Now, this is north of town, and I'll tell you how far in just a minute here, but there's a little village up there, and people go up there, and they have the usual, you can shop, you can look around the stores. So it's about an hour away. So again, you have to, you can take the ship's shore tour up there if you like, or you can go up on your own, charter the cab up there, so 48 miles. The reason why people go there, though, is because they like the Eagles. Who remembers the Eagles? Anybody remember them, the singing group? Well, they have the Hotel California up there. Now, there's some debate as to whether this hotel had anything to do with the song. In fact, I guess this, I don't want to bore you guys too long here, but apparently this hotel was sort of using the Eagles stuff, and the Eagles sued him, and there was this big lawsuit, and there, I don't know what finally happened with that, but, but uh, you remember that song, don't you? We haven't had that spirit here since 1969, have we? And you know what else? You can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave. You can never leave. That's right. And I apologize to you. I had a nice little song clip of that, and it all got messed up, so I don't have it. But you remember that song, don't you? And I'll tell you the Route 66 show, too, but I thought I read here a while back that the Eagles have sold more albums than either Elvis or the Beatles, if that's possible. So how about that? Well, you're probably going to be hungry if you go ashore for most of the day there, so there's plenty of restaurantes out there for you. A lot of them are on the beach there with a view, and you can try the, the local cuisine there if you want. There's a family-style kind of place there if you like, and maybe go over here with the view. But remember, even though we're in Mexico and it's pretty clean down there now, probably want to do the bottled water. Just play it safe, probably. And you can even eat on the beach, but I don't know if you want to do that. It's going to be pretty warm. It's going to be about 85 tomorrow. It's supposed to be partly cloudy. That may help a little bit. If you're snorkeling, you want to have a nice clear day, don't you? Look at the fish. But for the rest of you, you might prefer if there's a little bit of sun protection for you, if you're old like me with a million skin cancers and stuff, this is going to be maybe better for you. If you're wondering, we've finished the rainy season, 
But look at that. Three days a month is the rainy season. Uh, we, can, we can survive, right? But they do have occasional hurricanes where we are going for all three stops. Because the red box there is what we're doing for this little trip here. And, and uh, boy, only six weeks ago, maybe you saw it, maybe not. They had a Category 2 hurricane came right ashore in Cabo. That was on, um, Olaf was the name of the hurricane, and that was September 9th, just, what's that, five, six weeks ago. 110 mile an hour winds came ashore, and probably some of those little beach canopy things were going down the road there somewhere. But, but for October, we got 1.6 days a month, so I think we'll be safe tomorrow. And you can enjoy a late afternoon there. Uh, some of the cruises, they stay, we stay all night and then go back the next day, so. So the show works for all of these different sailings, but we're gonna be getting back on the ship, of course, later in the early evening, but you can do a late afternoon there. And if you really have a need, if you wanna do a little bit of Mexico for real, you can play around with the pesos. Now you're on vacation, I know, you don't wanna deal with heavy math, but just, all right, for a buck you get 20 pesos. You can think of that way, right? Or how about this way? A peso is five cents. I did the math for you, so 100 pesos is five bucks. He said, I'm sorry, I don't want anything, forget this. I said, well, you don't have to worry, you know why? Because I'll take this guy almost anywhere. If you got euros or whatever you got, I'm sure they're gonna take them, so they'll be happy to have your money. So we'll say adios to our first port, and we'll go on to our second stop, which is Mazatlan. Mazatlan, and we'll be there from eight to 5.30, now somehow, Mazatlan means land of the deer. And I don't think you'll see any deer wandering around down by the pier, but maybe they're around somewhere. But they must have been a long time ago. But look at how many people live there now. Half a million people now live in Mazatlan. That's amazing. Well, we're going to be 88 for the high. And once again, we're done with the rainy season for our Mazatlan. That's a good thing. See, the rains increase as you go on to the mainland over there. Even in October, three and a half days a month but none scheduled for Tuesday, which is our day of visit. So they're a lot older than Cabo. They've been around a long time. And this is kind of what the town looks like from the hill there. And you see the word Cerro. I can't do the double R, trill of R's. I never could do that, but C-E-R-R-O is a hill. So this is from one of the hillsides there. And you see the views along the way there. As we're sailing in, you'll probably see, see you'll be on the port side as, as we're coming in, no, starboard side as we're coming in, and you'll see the lighthouse there, the El Faro lighthouse. We'll be coming in from left to right in this picture. So the blue dot's where we're gonna be, and so the older part, the historic part of town is in the red circle, and the farther left you go, the newer the stuff. So most people wanna hang around the historic place, look around, we'll show you some of this. And the newer part of town is called the Golden Zone. You go over there with the beaches and the hotels and all that kind of thing. So you see old is toward the center and the bottom right, and then as you go out on the top of the picture, out to the new stuff out there. Newer, I don't know if it's brand new, but you get the idea. So we'll be at the red box there at the bottom, and you just go into town. Now if you're good walkers, and remember it's gonna be hot, take the water, all that stuff, it'll be your mom, take the sunscreen, wear the hat. But you can walk, it's, it's flat, six or seven blocks and be in kind of the middle of the town square there if you like, all the good stuff. You see a couple of ships are anchored there in the background, and look at this, on some days, there are as many as four will pull in here now. I don't think there's any way we'll have four. We might have two, and we're kind of just getting back into this now with the cruising, so in any case, you can see how the, the town spreads out there as you hold, uh, go towards the top of the picture there. But if you haven't been there before, there's really no pier right there where the ships come in. So you're landing at these freight dock places where if we're not there, they bring in a container ship or something and load some things. But normally you see the ships lined up and I can't tell you which berth will be at because I don't know, when we get there, we'll find out. But what you're gonna do is in the upper right of this picture, you'll see it's a tram thing. So wherever our ship is, you're gonna get on these trams. They go all the time, back and forth, and they run you over to the top left to actually the terminal. And so you go over there, and it's too far to walk. I don't think they even want you to walk. I think you have to take the 
the trams because of the freight stuff going on there. But there's a few shops over there and everything, and so that's where you're going to go to to catch the tours, to get the taxis, and do all whatever you're going to do. You will notice there's a Corona brewery sitting there, not far from the ship. So if we run out, you just go right over there, and I'm sure they'll have plenty for you. You can get some right there. And see, this is a view from, I guess, one of my balconies one time I took from the ship. So you see the town's just right out there, and all you got to do is just walk that way. You won't get lost. I don't think you will. And the red box, see those spires? Well, the spires are the famous old cathedral. If you do the city tour, they'll go over there. And, oh, you can go over there too, of course, but if you go on the tour, they'll take you over there. It goes back a ways, more than 150 years, so you can check that out. There's also an old theater there, Teatro. Now, they don't have a performance there at noon or anything like that, but if you want to see what the old house is there, the opera house, the theater there, go in there, and they have the usual plazas and all the rest, although I find it odd they're selling sushi there on the <laughs> left side in Mexico. But, hey, why not, right? Get some Japanese sushi in Mexico. And they have this, really you can't call it a boardwalk, although people do, it's not boards, but, but I'm told it runs for 13 miles. So if you're one of those joggers, got to get your 26 miles in, just run both ways along this waterfront walkway and you'll get your jogging in for the day. And along the way, you'll see this unusual kind of a monument, continuity of life. We got these statues and dolphins and it's kind of interesting. There's a couple of signs to tell you more about it. And not too far from the downtown area there, they have the cliff divers. You've probably heard of the Acapulco cliff divers and somewhere else. See, Cerro means the hill again, so they go up to Serra Nevaria, and you see them out there. Now, they're going to go, they don't have a set schedule, because they have to work with the tides, don't they? If the tide goes out, it could be in trouble. So, apparently the dive is about 50 feet, it looks like more than that in this picture, but so they go from about noon to late in the afternoon. So I can't promise you when and if you'll see anybody, but to have this big finale thing, look what they do. Look at all these divers at once. <laughs> I hope you find some humor in that. I hope that's a slow-mo thing. That's a little too crowded for me if I'm diving off into the water there, but isn't that a great shot? I love that. And from another Cerro, not too far from the ship, well, you go up there and you look out into the lagoon out there and see this other cerro way over there. And what that is, is El Faro. And that is going to be the, where the lighthouse is. Now, I want you to look at that. Re you get your choice of screens. There's a real twisty trail to go up there. Can you see that? Now, that is steep. And along the way, there's 300 and some steps, actual steps. The rest is just a path. So you start at the bottom. Okay, we can do this. Faro Mazatlan. Now I've had different, I did it a long time ago when I was younger and I could do stuff. But one person says a half mile at the top, another one says a mile and a half. Well, I don't know which it is, but you're going to do that to go to the top. And if you get up there, you're going to gain 500 feet or so, and you'll be at the highest lighthouse in all the Americas. Up there in Mazatlan. Well, that guy made it. If he can do it, maybe you could do it. And she made it up there. So maybe you can do it. See, nice view from up there, right? Well, facing the other direction, they got this thing they call the glass bridge. And so you walk out on that, and you get a really nice view of town. Now, they, they charge you a small fee. Now, the picture I had was so fuzzy, I didn't want to put it on the screen, but for 25 cents, you get in line and you go out there. If you pay a dollar, they move you to the front of the line. So if you want to invest a buck, you can get there a little faster. Let's see, you can go out there and, and take a look there if you want. But you go out, climb to the top first. You gotta get up there first. So, I don't know, for me, that's a little much for me to do anymore, but some of you maybe wanna try that. And then you go farther north out of town and you have the golden zone, the new part of town. And so you see expansive beaches there as you'd expect, hotels, pretty modern hotels. And that beach looks pretty empty. Again, I don't know how many people will be there. You're going to get there and find out. And they have the hop-on, hop-off. You're all familiar with that concept, right? So it's offered through the ship shore excursion thing. And you go every half hour. 
And they'll give you a map, show you all the stops, but they're gonna take you out there to the Golden Zone and some other places. Too bad they can't drive you up to the top of that Faro Lighthouse for the nice view. But that ain't gonna happen, you're on your own. One of the tours and you ride these things around town and have a little fun with that. And if you like the more nature stuff, just the other side of the pier from our ship, there's this big mangrove over there, swamp and everything. And so you get some kind of vehicle like this or like that, a vessel, and they take you on the tour. We have that if you want to go back and look for some of these guys. And you see the ships where we're going to be is in the circle, the yellow circle there. Well, right across, the mangrove is behind us here, but there's this, it's called Stone Island. It's not really an exact island all the way, but you have to, if you drive, you have to go all the way down, all the way back. It's something like nine miles. But they have this little island ferry thing if you want to try to find that. But if you want to do this, you go over there. There's a really nice beach, and there's a resort there where you can use their facilities. It's really close to the ship. It's just hard to get there. So if you're going to do this, you might want to just go ahead and do the ship shore excursion. But maybe you try some of the local Mazatlan dishes. It looks like some shrimp there and some other things. Do that. And so we'll say adios to Mazatlan and go to our third stop, which is Puerto Vallarta. And we'll be there from 8 to 5.30. Now, this will be the hottest of the three days, potentially. 90 degrees or even 91. And maybe, he said, I looked it up a couple hours ago, a chance for some isolated tea storms in the afternoon. But 0.03, I think you can live with 0.03, can't you? You might be glad if it cools you off a little bit because it'll be pretty warm down there. Remember, so this is the rainiest part of our three places. And, so in rainy season, it rains every other day in the month there. And they get a pretty good amount there, don't they? But October starts to tail off, so we're only averaging five days a month. So all right, maybe we get a little bit there, maybe not. But here it's this large bay, the Bay of Banderas, and we sail in there to where the red dot is. And for this place, it's all about zones. So you have the different zones. And the two most interesting to you are going to be the downtown zone and the nomadic zone. So we're going to be right there, the red dot. Look at the picture, the top left there. You see the red circle. That's where we're going to be. And in case you're just are longing to be home already, right across in visibility from the ship, you've got a Walmart right over there. <laughs> so if you have a need to go over there and do something, don't worry. You just get off the ship and walk across the street, and you're right there. And there it is. So you go in there. And they speak all languages, so you'll be fine. You can go in there. But for part of the Arctic, if we're at the one of the three piers is right here, you see the small boats there. That's where you're going to go to get on any of the water excursions that you're going to take, whatever it is. They have four or five different ones involving running the boat. So that's where you're going to go. The tour operator will be on board, and he'll just direct you around over there and get you on. Or if you want to buy one of these on your own, just go over there, and there's a ticket booth there somewhere and you can take a, a local little harbor cruise or something if you want there. You see we got three different piers now. So this is the used to be the only one there. And there's another one there right there. So there's three. In this old picture, I wish I could tell you what year this was, but literally everything in this scene is now filled in. All those empty spaces down there is all filled in. You see there was only one place for a ship to go in the red circle. But now we have two others. So we'll be at one of the three piers there, and you'll be ready to go. And the town's all that way. So first, you'll see these hotels along the way if you just want to go a little short distance from the ship. But most people like to go down a little farther to the downtown zone and the romantic zone. And they're separated by that little island there, which I'll tell you in a minute. But people like the romantic zone. It's got the historical stuff down there. And, and so you go see the difference there between the two. And everything is down that way. And what I wanted to tell you, now Puerto Vallarta has over 200,000 people. So you're going to see a few of them when you're there. But see, it was founded way back in 1918, but that's a lot newer than 1531 for Mazatlan, isn't it? Named after a former politician of the times. So this is the historic area there. So there's a famous cathedral there, as you can well imagine. It took them 10 years to kind of refurbish and fix it. And whether or not these flags are flying every day, I can't guarantee you. I don't remember them being there the last time I went over there, but the pictures I borrowed here, they always have the little flags going. But this is the romantic zone. And you walk around in there, and they have the colorful 
buildings and all that. This is very entertaining to me. I kind of like walking around there. So if you want to take the taxi there, the rates are based on the zones. So you're in zone romantic, you want to go to some other zones, or just tell the driver where you want to go. And maybe, just maybe, they have about three of these guys left. If you're lucky, you may find one of those down there. They're getting pretty scarce in part of Ayarta. We want the modern stuff for sure out there. But to know this little island here in the middle called Kuala, Kuala Island. And the only thing about this is, is you may have to walk up and down some steps depending on which area you're going there. So if steps aren't your thing, then maybe you don't want to do this. But, but what they have there is a kind of a flea market area, and you walk along the little island there, and you look at the shops and all that kind of thing. Maybe their price is a little bit better than some of the other places, but you get the idea. And there's a restaurant or two along there, too, all on this little island. And then they call it Gringo Gulch. The river, the Kuala River, is coming from the mountains before it reaches the little island that you just saw, well, you go by Gringo Gulch. And Gringo Gulch is more, most famous because of this movie that was made way back in the 1960s, Night of the Iguana with Richard Burton. Anybody seen Night of the Iguana by any chance? Not very many have. Well, it was made, what's that, 36, 57 years ago, so but Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor, and I'm not a Hollywood person. I don't remember whether they got married before they, he made the movie. She wasn't in the movie, but she was down there and he didn't like the accommodations they were giving him. And, and so they ended up getting these two villa house places across the street from each other. One of them is called the Casa Kimberly. If you go on the tour, well, you'll go in there and see where Richard Burton used to hang out there and maybe Elizabeth Taylor too. And this bridge connects the two. He rented at first the house across the street for her, and then she liked it, so I guess he bought it. So to connect the two houses, you walk across this bridge to connect the two houses. And I guess you walk across that if you want. But it's all called Gringo Gulch. And they have some of the cobblestone streets and the stuff you might expect in an older part of Mexico. And you see the guys, they're walking along on the cobblestone there. and. Maybe you see an old burrow walking along the street there. But if you want the more modern stuff, you go to the downtown area. Remember, it's right next to the romantic zone. And at Malecon is the Spanish, but like Esplanade or Boardwalk. And they the same thing here like they did in Mazatlan. And it runs all along the downtown waterfront there. So if you want to have a little, just walk along the waterfront there, maybe have a lunch, look in the shops, that kind of thing. This runs for quite a ways. You can get out there and join the rest of the folks there. Should be fun. And the vendors will be out there too, probably the street vendors for you. And then if you go back to the romantic zone, their beach has this pretty new pier thing, <clears throat> excuse me, and it's called Los Muertos. Well, I looked at uh, Los Muertos means the dead, doesn't it? So you got the dead pier sitting there, but nobody looks to be dead out there, but, but uh, I couldn't seem to find a good answer as to why they call this Los Muertos, because the whole beach is called Playa de los Muertos. So there's another beach for you there if you want to spend some time perhaps. And again, I have no way of knowing yet, class, whether or not there's going to be a lot of people there or nobody. We're going to find out soon enough, aren't we? But people seem to have a good time down there, and that's a little more crowded than I would like. I remember the one for the, this was during a spring break. So some of you remember spring break a million years ago, right? In college and came down to Florida or Arizona or Mexico or someplace and hung out for a week, right? So I, I can almost guarantee it will not be that crowded. We'll, we'll hope not. And maybe you like to sit on the beach this way. So that's kind of neat, isn't it? You get out there. Although again, being careful with the sun, your mom again, sunscreen and the whole thing. And yes, for your entertainment, you can do the zip lines there too if you want. Get a headache or something going upside down. And the ship's tours are available for this or get this kind of buggy and go in the back country on one of those. You can still play with the dolphins. So get out there. And maybe if you've been there before a bunch of times, maybe you never heard about this place, the Marietas Islands. Now where it is, look carefully in the center there, there's kind of a hole in the middle there. See that hole? See that? Well, it's out there. 
Well, you can't swim out there, so you do the shore excursion, and they take you out there, and you walk to the shore there, and you go into that hole I just showed you, the hole again. Well, and you do this. I mean, that looks kind of different, doesn't it? So if you want to do something you haven't done for a while, or maybe ever, consider that. But the good news is, our shore excursion folks can help you with, with any plans you might have. I don't have all the answers for your questions. If you see me walking around, I can try to answer for you. But again, with all these things going on with the pandemic and the virus, it's hard to know what's going to be open, how many people, what's this going to do. We just have to get there and find out. And you're going to find out along with me, so we're going to find out. Keep in mind, the whales are there, but only in the winter. So not yet. If you see a whale on this trip, you've had a few too many margaritas or something. So, yeah. But you know what? You can eat outside again there, too. I still wonder whether you want to be out there in that direct sun, but hey, there it is. So try it. See, you can see that Playa de los Muertos, the pier there. See it sitting back there? The point is, we're going to Mexico for three stops. So you got to try some of the local cuisine, right? And come on, get out there, try something. Don't go in there and get a cheeseburger. I mean, you can do better than that, right? Peanut butter sandwich, come on. And somewhere along the line, either on a tour or on your own, you probably have to rub noses with the culture. I mean, come on. Mariachi music, that kind of thing. Or maybe the colorful dress. Get involved with that. And maybe you have a margarita or two. Or maybe a tequila sunrise or two. And so we're going to say adios to Puerto Vallarta. So are the three stops, surely you're going to have a good time. The weather's going to be good. It's going to be nice and warm. I hope you're going to enjoy. And I have two minutes here so I can now share with you at 3 o'clock today, and then we're going to do two parts the first day on, day on the way back, C day. But what I'm going to do, class, is take you out on Route 66, the main street of America. We're going to have so much fun going back into the 50s and early 60s, and we'll look at the old cars. Anybody know what that one is? A Pontiac. Who said Pontiac? Extra credit, yes. Very good. Oh, I don't know, 53 or something? I don't know, Did something you know like that? that. And look at the old gas stations, and remember we had a friend, AM radio, didn't we? So we'll play a lot of the old songs. I got about 40 song clips for you to tell you about the past, and we'll look at some of the old restaurants and diners. Stay in some of the old motels, watch a little TV. Remember the old box TVs? You know, man. So we're going to take you back to the 50s and 60s. And the first chapter for that is going to be 3 o'clock today right here. And I sure hope you'll come and have a good time. You're going to sing along with the songs. and Tell anybody you meet or know, have them come on down there and be here in person. It's more fun to, to watch the 66 stuff in person. So we're going to do that at 3 today. So hope you have some idea now what we're going to do on our little week-long trip. And, and I hope you have a good time, and I'll see you around the ship, okay? So thank you for coming.